Aimé Fele. Aimé Fele trying to escape. Aimé Fele trying to escape. <laughs> this is serious. Aimé Fele trying to escape out of the out of the borders of Nigeria into another border to escape to another border to another continent. Like seriously? Let us be very truthful. Anyone that thought that Emefele, CBN governor, was not going to be arrested, the person should maybe kind of um, wake up from his or her slumber. That's the truth. Everyone knew that Emefele used his hands to prepare himself to be arrested. He did all of that. Now, there, there is no political office holder in Nigeria that is free of criminal activities or crime. None of them at all. Not even the president of Nigeria, not even the past president head of state. Every one of them has something. If you look at it closely, they should all be arrested. They should all be arrested. It is true because they believe they are above the law. They always find a way to circumvent the law. Now, if you look at it clearly, there are certain steps Emefele took that is not, you know, strange. It's not something that no one has seen before. It's something that many other politicians have practiced. They've done the same in their own capacity. Everything is just in the same direction. Corruption. And it all stems from wickedness. Now, MFLA did what he, he could do. And the final that he did, without thinking about it, probably he thought that Peter Obi was going to win or because he felt angry that uh, he wasn't given the opportunity. The cabals promised him that he would be flying <laughs> the ticket. Anyway, as it is, as it is, he did what he did. And now... He has been arrested. It is not actually Bola Metunumbu that facilitated this arrest. He already had this issue on his neck, hanging on his neck during Buari's tenure. That was why he had to call his friend, a rabbo, a military officer, to secure his safe entrance into Nigeria from the airport whilst he was gallivanting all over the UK and the United States. Because the DSS, the security operatives, DSS, ICPC, ESCC, they were on to him. Because legislators already saw that Emefele was making some move, cutting off the supply, you know, their criminal supply, looting supply, cutting off all of these things. So Emefele did all of these things. They saw it and they got angry. They said, okay, you know what? You're a criminal. We're all criminals. Since you believe that you are a bigger criminal, then... We are going to smoke you out. Immediately, Buari left. Emefele knew that the next thing that was going to happen to him is jail. He's going to prison. Was he trying to escape from Nigeria? What was he trying to do? Everything came out on the day that the DSS picked him up. He will not be getting out of this anytime soon. Even though some South Easterners are saying, oh... All of this is just tribal. It is, it is, it is, it is ethnic cleansing. It is this cleansing. A criminal is a criminal. This guy caused not just political pain to certain politicians that would have wanted money to do their terrible things. It cost it, and it also caused pain to civilians, Nigerians. Let us hear some analysis, and we will talk more. Would be suspended. In fact, Mr. Mefele, successor, was also suspended as well. The matter went to court, but part of what we might be analyzing tonight. However, Mr. Mefele will be perhaps the only CBA governor that would have worked under three different presidents and also lucky to have had his tenure renewed. So he's serving a second term of five years, as stipulated by the CBN Act. What does the arrest mean? What are the implications of the suspension and the arrest? on the CBN's activities and the economy. Tonight, we're looking at the legal angles and all of the issues that have been raised. A lot of Nigerians, eminent Nigerians, have been speaking about this and drawing the attention of the world to what has happened, those that differ to what the federal government has done, and those who are in support, and those who are drawing some caution. And that's Mr. Emefiele, who's said to have been arrested uh, in some part of Lagos, taken to the airport via a private jet and flown to Abuja. Tonight, I'm being joined by a very senior lawyer and human rights activist, Mr. Clement Uwanko. He joins us virtually from Abuja. Thank you so much, Mr. Uwanko, for joining us. And let me begin by asking tonight, just like a lot of Nigerians, I'd like to know like, how the news of Mr. Mefiele's suspension came to you. 
Well, certainly not unexpected, but um, uh, as a lawyer, I am very much more concerned about due process, and I am very much concerned about uh, following uh, the constitutionality uh, in doing this. Everyone knew, of course, that uh, Mr. Mephili uh, was going to come to, to a sad end uh, because of the way that he has managed the central bank, uh, because of the lack of professionalism that he has exhibited in his work, and because uh, he really crossed um, the boundaries, uh, boundaries of professionalism. So it was quite clear that uh, he was going to be out of the city, and the question was when and who, who would do it. Uh, I think what is really disappointing, of course, is that when you look at the um, laws that establish uh, the CBN, the Central Bank Act, there are provisions for removing a governor of the Central Bank, and I think for all of us who are watching uh, the situation, it's a question really to ensure that um, we follow due process. This is a government where you do have a, a, a new president uh, um, a, who has just come in. Um, for a very long time, we, I mean, we had President Jonathan, of course, but this is a civilian uh, who has emerged as, as president. Uh, so the concern for me is to be sure that we, we follow a due process, not just because we also we want to uh, lay precedence, but also really because of the economic uh, implications. Uh, in normal climes, the economy will be in turmoil right now. The currency will be in turmoil as a result of a central bank governor uh, being suspended from office. Um, and I, we, we could go into that discussion, but really, um, there is no provision in the CBN Act that allows for the central bank governor to be suspended by the president. Uh, the unfortunate thing is, of course, the role of the National Assembly, the Senate particularly, uh, which had the power to confirm him, but which has failed uh, woefully uh, to intervene. And you can stretch this to several other aspects um, of the Nigerian situation to see how much the Senate has failed in uh, its oversight responsibilities and in its powers of appointing and removal of uh, public officials. Obviously, there are controversies surrounding the arrest of Godwin Emefile, CBN governor, that has been suspended. We all know that the act of the governor is not at the interest of the Nigerians. I mean, he, he did a lot of terrible things. There are a lot of things that have been cited in his um, arrest. I mean, crimes that he has committed. But according to the law, does the power of the president stretch to that point where CBN governor can be arrested by the order of the president? Is it possible? I, I want you to pay more attention and like and share those with you as we'll be hearing more. Um, and also um, what Femi Falanos, you know, advocate of Nigeria, has to say as regards a case of former Senate President Sarah Key. In fact, I want you to listen to this from the beginning till the end. I mean, there was an article uh, published today in an online newspaper written by Professor Chidi Odin Kalu, which he titled Godwin Emefiele's Overdue Desserts. Um, in that, he uh, chronicled a lot of uh, infractions he alleged that the CBN governor had involved himself with some of which you have mentioned tonight. Um, some of these issues uh, bordering on morality and uh, in, uh, breaching of, uh, uh, of uh, the, the authority of his office and uh, the issue of involvement in politics even while holding um, uh, 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 the office of the CBN governor, uh, Professor Odin Kalu mentioned in that article um, the involvement of the CBN led by Mr. Emefiele and the National Theatre Project, um, the fact that there were pending legal issues hanging over that project. He mentioned the issues of ovation assets, which was another controversial issue uh, about Mr. Mayfield. He also allegedly mentioned um, holding of uh, alleged offshore accounts by Mr. Godwin Mayfield. He mentioned several other things, but in all of this, there is uh, something that uh, Mr. Femi Falanat said, uh, uh, Mr. Wonko, which I'd like you to 
comment on. Let me read what Mr. Falamir said. He was somewhat just cautioning based on what happened in the case of Bukala Saraki and his trial. Um, and he said that the reason why that trial failed, basically, he said, quote, in the case of Dr. Bukala Saraki versus the Federal Republic of Nigeria, um, he went further to say that uh, um, the Supreme Court ruled that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission lacks the bias to uh, investigate and prosecute the appellant for the breach of the provisions of the Code of Conduct Bureau and Tribunal Act. It was for that principal reason that Senator Saraki was freed by the Apex Court. Um, the the uh, Leonard Sick went further to now warn that the DSS should then be very careful. It says that uh, they cannot go uh, with, uh, in, in the manner in which they are going and they need to be careful. He said, in line with the principle of law uh, initiated by the APS court in Saraki's case, uh, that the DSS lacks the power to investigate and prosecute Mr. Emefele in respect of allegations of money laundering and other economic crimes. Therefore, after investigating the alleged involvement of Mr. Emefele in terrorism financing, that the DSS should transfer him to the EFCC and the purpose of investigating the allegations of money laundering and allied offenses. Otherwise, the investigation of the case will be bungled by the DSS. What are your views on those comments, Mr. Wonkwo? I think both lawyers um, are very senior lawyers. Uh, Professor Chidi Odenkalo, uh, Femi Falon, of course, we, we, we know how vast his experience and knowledge is. And so these are comments not to be taken very lightly at all. Uh, and you can go on and on. There would be, a, you know, hundreds of allegations that, that could come up. But the most important thing is always that in taking up a case, it would be to set the precedent uh, so that uh, lessons can, can be taken. Uh, I think that when you follow the mob, then you really, at the end of the day, um, rush in and act very unprofessionally. I agree with, um, uh, with um, uh, the Leonard Silk, Femi Falano, that um, the DSS has no responsibility to investigate uh, this matter. Uh, it should be the responsibility of the EFCC, of course, and um, it's going to be up to uh, these presidents to also understand uh, that in a constitutional democracy where the rule of law uh, takes precedence, that the appropriate authorities should be the one doing so. We must also not forget the fact that uh, whatever the gravity of the allegations are against uh, Mr. Mephile, um, he is at this time presumed innocent until proven guilty. And so uh, the um, protection of the law uh, and the benefits of the law also need to be given to him, which means that even though he's arrested he cannot be kept in custody indefinitely uh, he would be entitled to bail so he should be charged uh, to court and the constitution is quite clear about how long you can hold any person uh, but certainly there is no doubt from what you have said and from the feelings across the country that the levels of uh, anger and i think this came to the head in the so-called currency, I would say currency recoloring, uh, but Mr. Mephile called it coloring. Changing the colors of the currency and inflicting incredible, incredible pain and hardship. Uh, Nigerians died during his so-called currency recoloring exercise. Uh, people lost their means of livelihood. Uh, the sense of it was that he was doing it for political purposes. And as we can see today, there is no evidence that the, uh, in fact, it would seem to me that that exercise is a failure in itself. And it will be a question to investigate that those involved in uh, that very painful and, and hardship inflicting exercise uh, to ensure that for the future, because that's the end of, that's the ultimate at the end of the day, for the future that these things do not occur uh, with the levity uh, that, um, that we saw it um, happen uh, under Mr. Mefele as a, as a CBN governor. Uh, but again, we have to go back to the law. It also tells you uh, who should be appointed to act in, in his capacity. And indeed, there is really no provision for uh, you to have 
uh, an acting CBN governor. So you, you might say, okay, he's, he's resigned or you have removed him or suspended him from office. Again, there's no constitutional or uh, legal provision for suspending a CBN governor. And I would expect that the president will immediately, uh, the, the Senate's uh, and the National Assembly is inaugurated in, 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 in the coming days, um, uh, put a motion across to, or get the Senate to pass a motion, removing him by two-thirds majority of the Senate. And it would seem to me that this would be a popular decision that the Senate can very easily give. Uh, but I would think that we need to follow due process uh, for the purpose that you might indeed have a CBN governor in the future who refuses to be a tool in the hands of the executive and yet may be suspended from office simply because he refuses to be a tool in the hands of the executive. So I do think that for legal purposes, for president's purposes, the president should do the right thing. Getting the DSS to arrest Mr. MFLA um, it should be that he's handed over to the appropriate investigating and prosecuting authorities, uh, but also uh, that um, he, he should be removed from office only by a vote in the Senate of two-thirds majority of members of the Senate who uh, would act, uh, who would then be acting in line Regardless with the law. Regardless of like tribal connotation or trying to incite some religious bigotry and sentiment and all of that. Well, Emefile acted improper. He made use of his office to perpetrate alleged crimes. And the one that we know, he made sure that citizens suffered a lot. In fact, we looked at the psychological effect of it. Is it easier for you to take money from whoever offers it to you during that election, if you do not have access to money, even though you have it, this could break your moral standing, your moral values. He decided to put this at a point where Nigerians were talking about breakup of Nigeria, where Nigerians are worried if this election will hold at all. Psychologically, people were kind of uptight. People weren't prepared for it. This man just decided to come up with this. And he was sounding incorrect, talking in a manner at which, you know, senselessly. And this man has his children in Europe. He has his children where things work. And he wants to put Nigeria right by coming up with this change of Naira notes at that time, saying that he wants to mop money, currency that is out there. Who knows? Maybe he's trying to cover his uh, track. But as it is right now, he has been arrested. And you listen to the um, legal analyst saying that the president does not have the power and that the... Um, the legislators should work to do the right thing and uh, maybe he will be released or not. But then, will he serve in that capacity as central bank governor or what is going to happen? I don't know. You heard him. He said there is no provision in the constitution for acting CBN governor. The law needs to be looked into. I do understand that the law is not perfect. Constitution is not perfect. At times, they have to reintroduce. They have to amend. This is the point, time, where the legislature needs to look into this. There are a lot of problems that we have in Nigeria. There are a lot of issues that we have in Nigeria as regards constitution. Look at what is happening. Look at what's happening. In fact, one thing that I want to also mention is this. Humanity of past president should be he removed totally to be eradicated vice president it should be eradicated not only governors can be prosecuted presidents should also be prosecuted for whatever it is this will make them behave well knowing fully well that after their term they will be facing the law and i am not talking about witch hunting or someone trying to punish the president or ridicule the president it will be clear seen this and this is what happened although they do, according to the law, declare what they have. And at the end of it, they also declare. And um, Nigerians will be watching to see. But we know how they work. Well, what are your thoughts about Emefele's arrest? Um, they say it is not constitutional because it is not provided for in the constitution. And um, since there is not going to be any acting, even if he is going to be sacked, who will be installed in as the new 
um, CBN governor? These are questions that a lot of Nigerians um, want answers to. Although there are some who are already putting tribal you know, connotation to you, they say, oh, we should go to Biafra, we should do this. Even in your Biafra, even in your Yoruba nation, even in your Awusa nation, Fulani nation, Ibibio nation, Efik nation, will you be comfortable with a man that acted in this capacity? Use this office to create pain. A lot of people lost their businesses. You heard what the lawyer said, but we know that all of these things happened. Is there any punishment for a man who has committed such? He's so lucky to have served this long, but now seems to be the end, the downfall. I mean, the, the total end of, of his time as CBN governor. I do not think he will be brought back again. I do not think so. Um, do not forget that personally, um, there are some politicians who believe that he offended them, even though we know they are all criminals anyway. Both MFLA, uh, whoever that you want to mention, they are all thieves, they have dirty linen, they have skeletons in their cupboard. Well, what is the way forward? What is the way forward? What are the ways to attend to certain issues, critical issues, sensitive issues such as this in Nigeria? Did you lose your business? What happened to you during that introduction of New Naira Note? Is there any country in the world where you buy money? These are the questions that a lot of people want to know about. They want to ask, is there any country where you buy notes because of one man initiating a policy backed up by ignorance? Ignorant President Buhari, who will never understand what this means to him. He was just thrown the filler. Sir, to make sure that your exit and handover is clean and pure. We are going to change Naira note because of this and that. There are people who have stopped money to bribe. Oh, Buari will say, yes, that is it. Since he was brought in to turn Nigeria to a country of integrity and himself uh, deal with uh, criminal politicians. But unfortunately, he was unable to do any of this. Well, drop your comment, like and share, subscribe to this channel. See you in the next update.